everybody, and welcome to Berlin. Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, there's a common saying in Moldova, and I've been told that you can roughly translate it as a friend in need is a friend indeed. And I believe this is why we are all here today, sharing together as friends. Because a friend of us really needs us, and this is not only Ukraine, but this is also Moldova. And therefore I'm welcoming from the bottom of our heart, Prime Minister, dear Natalie, and also our colleague, Foreign Minister, Nico Popescu, here today in Berlin. You and your comrades have turned these words, a friend in need is a friend indeed, into concrete humanitarian action over the past few weeks. When I, and I guess many of us, have traveled to Chisinau and the Moldovan-Ukrainian border last month, what struck me above all was the immense solidarity displayed by your citizens. Around 400,000 refugees have crossed from Ukraine into Moldova over the past few weeks. They arrived in a country of some 2.6 million inhabitants. This is roughly as many as in Chicago, Toronto, or Rome. Chisinau's mayor, Ayan Cheban, showed me how the people of his city have welcomed their Ukrainian friends and neighbors with quite literally open arms. Despite freezing temperatures, officials and many, many volunteers have been organizing shelters, beds, and buses. They have opened their private homes, their children's rooms, their living rooms. They have been handing out hot tea and food, reaching out their hands to friends in need. And it's truly impressive what they have been doing over the last weeks, and we all applaud you for it. Talking to refugees at the border highlighted to me just how dire the situation is. Many of these women and children do not have relatives they can join in other parts of Europe. They are on their own, often with babies who need shelter, with children who obviously should be in school or in kindergarten. It is abundantly clear that no country in the world, neither Germany, nor France, nor Romania, or Moldova, can handle this huge challenge on its own. We can only shoulder this together as friends. And there's another wise saying in Moldova, which says kind of, I may not have 100 rubles, but I have 100 friends. And this is also what it is today here in Berlin. We were starting this conference just a couple of days ago, but within minutes, many, many of you have just said, yes, we will come. And we will come not by somebody in our team, but we will come in person. We are welcoming here today 47 delegations, 39 directly in Berlin, the rest digital ones, many, many ministers, prime ministers, and even more staff behind it. Many international organizations, and it's so good to see you all here together in Berlin. And especially I would like to welcome my dear colleague and friend, Jean-Yves Le Drian, Bogdan Aurescu, which have the co-chairmanship of this conference today and are here today to share this meeting all together. As a Moldova support platform, as a bridge of solidarity between friends, but also only as a starting point, because this is not just a single day event, but this is a bridge for the upcoming future. The goal of the platform and today's conference is twofold. First of all, we want to mobilize immediate support for Moldova, politically, financially, and in kind, according to the requirements of our Moldovan partners. But this is not 
a favor to Moldova. This is about us. It's also about our security. It's about our common European peace project. It's our responsibility. This conference here today, this bridge between friends, is bigger than Moldova. It is a bridge between friends and it is a bridge for human security and human solidarity. One crucial aspect will be to show solidarity in the re relocation of Ukrainian refugees. And I'm glad that we have already been able to organize many, many flights from Kisinau for Germany for 300 people and many partners of you have joined already with planes also leaving from Chisinau. And we will call on other partners to join this effort. Because what we are needing now are concrete commitments and we are giving them today at this common platform. And we have a second goal. The need to look beyond the here and now and to help address Moldova's longer-term needs and security. Let me be very clear on this. Russia's war is not just an attack on the Ukrainian people, it is also an attack on our rule-based international order and on our values that all connect us. This is also what this conference is all about. It's about freedom, peace and the right of self-determination. All people have the right to decide their own future. No one should be at the mercy of their stronger neighbor, neither the people of Ukraine nor the people of Moldova. That's why we want to strengthen our cooperation with Moldova beyond immediate needs for the long term. Together with our Moldovan partners, we want to assess how we can help reduce Moldova's dependency on Russia economically, financially, and with view to energy needs, and to strengthen the country's resilience. And I'm very thankful that not only 47 delegations are here, but also that within hours, you, many partners of us, have been willing to participate in the co-chairing of the different baskets we are talking here about today not only refugees, but also for other partners. partners. So besides France, Romania and Germany, we're having the co-chairs of Canada, US, Italy, UK, Sweden and the European Commission. In the field of energy, we want to look at dependency and see how Moldova can diversify and to enhance its renewable energies, become more energy efficient, particularly in the right of the rising prices. We will look at how to support the government's efforts to fight against corruption and to strengthen the rule of law. We want to identify the main challenges and opportunities for the next steps for the justice reform. Thirdly, we will look at border management because the situation is, this has been shown the last days, again very, very tense. So therefore we also support with this conference border management and border control. And we will discuss how Moldova's economic resilience can be strengthened so that the government can undertake its planned reforms. To this end, and as a starting point as the chair for today's conference, we as Germany have made a unified financial loan of 50 million euros available to meet the financial needs of the Moldovan government. We have also ramped up our humanitarian assistance to the whole region with 307 million euros. This contribution will also be used to address the acute humanitarian needs in Moldova. And this afternoon, and this is what the conference is all about, we will elaborate in our contributions in the other tracks how we can support Moldova. I want to thank the co-leaders for their willingness to work on these five themes in close cooperation with the Moldovan government. And I'm grateful that we have crucial international organizations and international financial institutions at this table, but also on board for the upcoming month. 
It is clear to me that we can only respond to this crisis effect effectively if we act together. As friends who stand up for each other, as friends to be united. And with concrete actions, with concrete solidarity, and in those times with concrete financial support. So thanks again for all to you of being here today and thank you especially to the Moldovan government of joining us today as a prime minister, as a foreign minister with a strong delegation here today in Berlin. And I give the word to my co-chair Jean-Yves. Thank you for being here. Merci, Annalena, Madame la... Thank you, Annalena, Prime Minister, dear friends. Um, for me as well, it gives me great pleasure to be here together with you as we launch uh, the support platform uh, for Moldova. The war is still raging and it is causing um, a terrible humanitarian situation which is worsening by the day. Um, millions of people um, have become refugees and we can also see by the day um, all of the atrocities that are taking place and unfortunately this is not the end of it. This situation has prompted an impressive show of solidarity and I believe all together we can be proud of it. The European Union probably has never been uh, so united and uh, reactive in its response to this unprecedented situation and we shall continue. Unfortunately, as we can all see, the war is not over and its consequences will weigh on our continent for many years. And we shall be able to maintain our support to Ukraine, to the displaced people, and also to the countries that are at the forefront to receive the refugees. We should do that in the long run. And accordingly, these saying which Annalena was quoting, I may not have a hundred rubles, but I have a hundred friends. Well, that should be long lasting. Accordingly, we should look into um, uh, strengthening or, or help uh, to our Moldovan uh, friends who've uh, shown an outstanding generosity and resilience vis a vis their neighbors, even though the war is having direct consequences on their daily lives. And like um, others, I myself could see um, on the ground uh, the reception organized by Moldova for those fleeing the war, and I would like to pay tribute to them. I also would like to thank Annalena for taking uh, the initiative of organizing this support platform. I believe indeed this is the right concept because it means we can do it in the long run. It's not just a one off. And we shall make sure that this support platform is a tool, some sort of a, a tool for cause solidarity with Moldova in the long run. And I um, can only rejoice to see um, so many of us involved in this solidarity. As Europeans, we've already done a number of things. There was, um, for example, the status agreement that enabled uh, the Frontex agency to be deployed in Moldova. Uh, there is uh, some support at the border. Um, there is some uh, relocation operations as well um, from Moldova, organized by a number of us, um, and we shall continue to do so. Um, that will be part of our discussions today. At the European level, there was also some financial support that was made available in order to um, allow Moldova to cover part of its financial needs. And France um, also has decided to increase its support um, accordingly, 126 million euros in aid uh, will be provided to Moldova. And I have in particular in mind um, um, our um, help for the renovation of key infrastructures such as the railway between uh, um, Kisinau and Ungeni. So we need to find the way for sustainable and structured assistance to Moldova uh, to be adjusted as well to the needs as expressed by Moldova and uh, adjusted to the absorption uh, rhythm that will be expressed um, or explained to us by Moldova. But please allow me to underline uh, something uh, essential which also was mentioned by Annalena, the energy issue. 
on this one, we will be. Um, um, we've launched some specific work uh, with um, our Italian colleague Luigi Di Maio because the en energy mix of Moldova means that they are uh, greatly dependent on Russia. And I believe we can say it together, uh, the war in Ukraine has uh, shed light on the necessity for the European countries to strengthen their um, energy security and independence. So we need to make sure that our energy supply, which are indeed of vital interest for our people and our industries, are not or do not become political leverages in the hands of countries that can abuse them um, against us or against our partners in the context of aggressive strategies. This is the reason why this, uh, Europe has decided to overcome as soon as possible its dependency vis a vis Russia in the field of uh, oil in particular. And it is also the reason why we shall um, help our neighbours including Moldova, of course, to overcome this dependency, um, which is a strategic vulnerability. Um, we've already been working on that, and the working group that we will be uh, um, uh, chairing with uh, Italy uh, will accordingly be crucial for now, but for tomorrow as well. Uh, we will have to assess uh, uh, the needs of Moldova and um, uh, assess their as well uh, help them uh, strengthen their energy efficiency in the long run. Um, this is what I meant to say by way of an introduction. So Moldova can rely on France's commitment, I believe uh, they know, on the commitment, total commitment as well of the European Union, I believe they know, and um, the total commitment as well of the 47 countries represented here, and I believe they're aware of that as well. And this mobilization, I believe, will be a success, not only because of our solidarity or generosity, but also because we clearly understand that we have joint interests. Your security is our security. Thank you for that. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Jean-Yves. Uh, and now I give the floor to the other uh, co-chair of this uh, uh, conference, to the um, Foreign Minister of Romania, uh, Dia Bogdan. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Baerbock, dear Annalina, for graciously hosting uh, this conference here at the Federal Foreign Office. At today's um, landmark uh, conference, together with you and uh, uh, Minister Le Drian, Cher Janiv, I'm honored to co-sponsor uh, the initiative of launching the uh, Moldova Support uh, Platform. Um, dear Prime Minister Gavrilica, uh, from the outset allow me to convey Romania's profound appreciation for the Republic of Moldova's impressive efforts in welcoming and hosting Ukrainian uh, refugees forced to flee their homes. Let me pay tribute to the authorities, to the citizens and organizations in the Republic of Moldova who have shown tremendous solidarity, generosity and humanity. Distinguished colleagues, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has profoundly changed the reality in the region. In the Republic of Moldova, as Ukraine's um, direct and most affected uh, neighbor, is at a critical juncture and needs our support, our consistent and immediate support. As we have uh, gathered here at this uh, conference, we uh, are sending a powerful message of our unwavering support for and engagement with Chisinau. And I am glad, dear Annalina, that uh, you share my view, as we discussed uh, uh, just before the start of this conference, uh, that supporting the Republic of Moldova goes uh, beyond supporting Chisinau itself, but it means supporting the security of the region and of Europe in a larger sense. The Moldova support platform will allow us to adapt our assistance to the Republic of Moldova's precise needs, as well as to mobilize robust and coordinated support. And this is an, a strategic and enduring choice that we are making. It is strategic uh, because the financing gap and the overlapping crisis that the Republic of Moldova is facing threaten the government's ability to continue the implementation of the reforms it has so strongly committed to. Moreover, these challenges could have political implications for the pro-European and pro-reform government in Chisinau. It is enduring because we are here for the long haul. This conference is not just a one-off event to deal with the current crisis, as severe and unexpected that may be. We are here as all-weather friends of the Republic of Moldova. We are here because we want it to succeed in its courageous journey 
towards a democratic, free and fair society that will be part, I am convinced, of the European family in not too distant future. Ladies and gentlemen, since autumn last year, the state budget of the Republic of Moldova has been under severe strain. Last autumn we have witnessed a gas crisis, which was an example of how energy can be used for political purposes. After that, a new gas contract was in place, bringing about some predictability, but a costly one. The rising prices, the vol volatility on the international markets have drained heavily the Republic of Moldova's state coffers. On top of that, the Republic of Moldova is now confronted with a refugee crisis which is unprecedented in recent times and with the harsh economic fallout of the war in Ukraine. Hundreds of people fleeing the Russian aggression have entered the country and about 100,000 are still in the country. The government in Chisinau has to bear additional costs of more than 1 million euro per day. And realistically, current exceptional challenges are beyond the Republic of Moldova's institutional capacity to address them, while at the same time focusing on implementing the needed reforms, the main objective of the government. In this context, I warmly welcome yesterday's decision in ECOFIN approving the 150 million euro ma macro financial assistance for the Republic of Moldova. And let me stress here a couple of other important steps taken over the past weeks. The synchronization of Ukraine and Republic of Moldova with continental Europe power grids, which needs to be consolidated from a technical point of view. The status agreement allowing Frontex to rapidly assist the Republic of Moldova in border management. From a humanitarian standpoint, EU and international support has been swift. However, more needs to be done, including by relocating refugees from the country. More swift, decisive and coordinated support is needed. That's why we are here today united and determined to move to another stage our support for the Republic of Moldova. Looking around the table to all of us gathered here makes me optimistic and I strongly believe that the initiative launched today here in Berlin will be a powerful and lasting platform. It will help address both pressing challenges but also Kishino's medium and long-term development needs. Bilaterally, Romania is providing the Republic of Moldova with a substantial support package of grants that comprises 100 million euro as a project-based grants. This new package was agreed at our joint government meeting in Chisinau in February, and we are ready to receive from our partners in Chisinau proposals for development projects, which we will soon start to implement. Various donations in kind, more than 70 tons, to help relieve the stress of accommodating the refugees and bolster the energy security of the country. On this last point, I mentioned the donation of fuel worth of 3.8 million euro. At the same time, I am pleased to announce that Romania decided to grant fresh money to support the budget of the Republic of Moldova at these critical times, a grant of 10 million euros. We will continue delivering substantial in-kind humanitarian assistance for the refugees in Moldova. Likewise, Romania has set up green lanes to fast-track daily transfer of people fleeing Ukraine through the Republic of Moldova directly into Romania. And the aim is to help refugees while avoiding putting more pressure on an already overstretched infrastructure in uh, your country. Let me share with you some of Romania's thoughts on several key priorities that we need to focus on the longer term in support of the government in Chisinau. These are actually conclusions we have reached together with our friends in Chisinau during the intense bilateral dialogue we had over the past month. First, a robust financial assistance is essential to help the authorities cope with the energy crisis, stabilize public finances and support the current government's objectives to implement reforms, strengthen the rule of law, modernize public institutions and sustain the standard of living. Second, on energy security, there is a wide agenda in front of us. We should look to developing local energy generating capacities, strengthening electricity interconnections, as well as of gas connectivity inside the Republic of Moldova and to support gas supply diversification with a view to reducing its dependence on Russian gas. And we are, as you know, working together, looking for alternative supply options such as Azerbaijan, we will also host its, uh, in our own storage capacities gas belonging to the Republic of Moldova and we are considering to build a Moldovan gas storage capacity on the Romanian territory. In any scenario, the recently finalized Yash-Kishinev pipeline 
gas pipeline will play a central role. Third, in order to bolster and uh, advance the reform agenda, I propose a very simple and effective solution to set up a Moldova support group within the European uh, Commission that would bring together staff from different policy areas, which is mirroring in structure but not in size the similar group on Ukraine, which was already created. Uh, EU and EU overall assistance for the Republic of Moldova is important, so we would have an aggregate effort, effort um, to support uh, achieving uh, the long-term objectives of Chisinau. Romania believes that it is uh, also the high time for a clear recognition and advancement of the Republic of Moldova's European perspective, not just because of the current exceptional circumstances, but also because of the clear commitment and uh, strong, consistent reform drive of the government in Chisinau, which is not circumstantial, but rooted down in Chisinau's firm political will and in the solid popular support for the European choice within the Republic of Moldova. We know from our own experience that this is a first step in a long uh, process, but we know also from our own experience that we need to take this step now if we really want to maintain credibility prove once more that the transformative power of the European project is working, and at the end of the day, to give the reform-minded government in Chisinau the chance it deserves. Finally, allow me to announce Romania's intention to co-host in Bucharest the next ministerial conference of the Moldova Support Platform. The platform has taken shape today here in Berlin, and I think it is up to all of us to make the most of it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Bogdan. And now I give uh, the floor to the Prime Minister of Moldova, Natalie Gavrilitia. Welcome again, and thanks for being here. The floor is yours. Excellencies, dear ministers, dear Annalena, uh, dear jean dear Bogdan, first of all, let me thank you for hosting this conference at such a short notice, but with a long-term commitment. We are very grateful for the initiative of Germany, France and Romania to organize this unprecedented donors conference here in Berlin and we are also very grateful for the high-level participation and uh, the friendship that we are seeing here. Um, it is truly unfortunate that we have to meet today under such tragic circumstances. We were planning a donors conference on uh, our uh, needs for partners in reforms, in reforms for the long-term development of Moldova, for the transformation of Moldova along the path to European integration. But now we are in different circumstances. The war against Ukraine has brought death, pain and destruction. Uh, there is absolutely no gain from destroying families, displacing millions of people and killing the hope for a better future for the youth. I think no one thought that in 2022, a peaceful country would have to face a full-scale military invasion of a dimension not seen since the Second World War. The Republic of Moldova strongly condemns this military attack, and we stand united with Ukraine and the Ukrainian people in their hour of need. From the very onset of the invasion of our neighbor, we have done everything in our power to help people freeing from the war. As of today, more than 390,000 refugees from Ukraine have entered our country through the eastern border. About 100,000 people are still in the Republic of Moldova, and almost half of them are children. The number of refugees staying represents almost 4% of our population. And there are significant uncertainties, and we have to remain vigilant, and we have to have contingency plans uh, in case the situation changes. Despite our limited resources, thanks to an unprecedented mobilization of the Moldovan society, ranging from state institutions to volunteers, or non-governmental organizations, the business community, we were able to provide refugees with decent conditions and very good services. Coping with this influx is one of the biggest challenges any Moldovan government 
has faced over the last three decades. And this comes on top of the existing crises. Even before the war began, we had been battling the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, which were further exacerbated by the severe uh, energy crisis that we have had, and then, of course, the skyrocketing uh, energy prices and inflation. I know that this is a situation faced by many countries uh, in Europe and around the world right now, but our resilience is different. The level of impact is different. Even before the war, the price of the cost of gas for Moldovan citizens uh, had risen by 360 um, percent. And already prior to the invasion, inflation had reached 18 percent. So, you know, a quarter of the Moldovan households spend a quarter of their earnings on energy. So, in most of your countries, uh, that would make uh, them highly vulnerable uh, in terms of their energy needs. And poverty is already um, at almost at 30 percent in Moldova, and these, uh, this further deterioration of the purchasing power of the Moldovan people creates significant risks for social cohesion. So now we have to deal with the social and economic fallout of the war interrupted supply chains and anticipated reduction in remittances, especially from our diaspora in Russia, food security risks, hybrid threats, and especially these further rises in prices which will further strain household budgets in a country where uh, we have significant levels of vulnerability already, both among the refugees and among the host population. At the same time, um, as Janiv mentioned, the Republic of Moldova is one of the most vulnerable countries in Europe in terms of security of energy supply and energy prices. We are the only country in Europe, the gas imports of which are 100% dependent on one source, um, and that is Gazprom. We truly need an urgent revision and adjustment of the existing energy strategy policy and above all significant investments. A high a highly problematic issue is also access to electricity. The Republic of Moldova has no alternative to deliveries from Ukraine and the Transnistrian region, as there is as yet no interconnection with the high uh, voltage electricity grid in Romania. This is why interconnection projects are a priority for us. They will help us to avoid crises in the future and provide more availability of electricity sources. But of course, this is not a short-term solution. Our macroeconomic analysis indicates that the war in Ukraine will result in a considerable GDP decrease compared to business as usual scenario. And even with the additional financing that we are already seeking from the IMF and the World Bank and the macrofinancial assistance that, uh, that was approved by the European Union, this will not suffice to cover the financing gap for 2022 and 2023. And on top of that, um, all the countries here have uh, ramped up their debt uh, to deal with the COVID crisis, um, so has Moldova. And so uh, even though our um, external debt is not that high, but our debt sustainability analysis indicates that Moldova is close to the safe borrowing limits, both because of uh, challenges in refinancing the internal debt and the uh, exchange rate risk of the external debt. So if I sum it up, I think it's very clear that Moldova is the most vulnerable among Ukraine's neighbors, and we don't even have a security umbrella to rely on. So today, Moldovan government needs good, good friends and reliable partners. And some support can come quickly and is a matter of a decision taken together uh, so uh, I think that we are all 
concerned about logistics chains and how they have changed. So, uh, you know, we are working with many countries in terms of liberalization of transport authorization and facilitation of trade routes, uh, which will um, help everyone to maintain uh, the, the trade. At the same time, you know, we think that uh, removing the quotas for uh, the export of um, Moldovan agricult agricultural goods would be a very strong sign of support when we have to reorient our exports from Russia to other markets. Uh, we have already discussed this within the European Union. It is now up to member states, but uh, Moldova uh, cannot make a huge impact um, on the European market. At the same time, this opening will be a huge signal for a reorientation of our producers. At the same time, uh, as Bogdan mentioned, we do need financial support. Um, we are uh, in need of a sizable increase of grant support to the budget. This budget support is particularly important in light of challenges for quick absorption of funds in the short term. Lack of financing and high borrowing levels would jeopardize future economic development of Moldova, would test the limits of social cohesion and aggravate Moldova's long-standing political fragmentation, generating instability in the region with potential reverse spillover effects on the already precarious situation on Ukraine. So it, it is critical for us to safeguard the existing fiscal space and maintain political stability and social cohesion. We have projects that we need to accelerate given the changes in our circumstances. We have ideas about uh, key interventions to ensure stability and reduce sec sector sectorial risks, for example, in energy efficiency and energy supply security, financing the private sector, especially small and medium enterprises, ensuring food security, building resilience against hybrid threats, and enhancing social resi resilience. We we are ready to implement these projects together with our partners. Um, it is precisely r this word resilience that we are seeking to achieve together. We, in terms of our energy security, massive investments and robust measures for energy efficiency projects in public buildings, residential buildings and industry will be required. And through more extended use of renewable energy resources, we will not only be able to reduce our vulnerability, but also be able to provide a key contribution to a cleaner environment and to the green transition. We have to make sure that we are no longer dependent on volatile supply chains, logistics networks, and export markets in the agricultural sector. Consolidating food security is therefore also very high on our agenda. And as has been already mentioned, um, our borders, we are, uh, but also within our country, we are facing new challenges that are stemming from the volatile security environment and transnational criminality, but also from what has become known as hybrid threats. So we are working and have uh, projects, concrete projects we could implement together to strengthen cybersecurity and fight against misinformation and fake news. And we are committed to help the most vulnerable people in our society who have to deal with economic hardship and are at risk of social exclusion. The people of Moldova have, during the past two years, sent a clear message that they view the future of our country within a strong and united Europe and as part of the free world. We have been determined, despite the crises, despite the fact that this government, in eight months of its uh, mandate, has had to declare an emergency situation a third time now, we have still progressed on our path 
for uh, reforms for combating corruption, uh, reforming the justice sector. Together with many of you, we are working on the external evaluation of judges and prosecutors because we believe that it is these EU democratic values that are key to our prosperity and the prosperity of our citizens. So it is the responsibility of the government that I have the honor to lead to deliver on the promise that we have made when we asked for people, people's trust. That we are going to modernize our state, fight against corruption, create economic opportunities, and raise living standards. And in doing so, bring the Republic of Moldova closer to our aspiration to become a full member of the European Union. So thank you again for this conference and I look forward to working together uh, both today but also in the medium and long term to make sure that we progress along the path, this path. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. And uh, now we would uh, do the tour de table. I would really like to ask you to be very short. And uh, as an example for this, a high representative who always says to us as four ministers, be short and sharp, can give a good example now how short uh, three minutes and how sharp they are. So I welcome digitally uh, now on screen Joseph uh, Borrell from Brussels for the European Union.